$12,000. I'm gonna be talking in this video about how much money I spend to travel like I do full time. Now, if you know your stuff really well, you know I'm in college right now, but I did have an entire year, my gap year, where I did this full time. And I still take like this whole summer I've been traveling, I traveled every month during the school semester and that will actually be the topic of my upcoming podcast episode on Monday. So make sure you subscribe to my podcast, it will be a link down below. But yeah, I'm going to be discussing how you can make time for that uh, when you're in college or you have a full time job. But in this video, we're going to talk about how much does it actually cost to do what I do full time because of course there are miles and points aspects that I use most of the time but there are still co-pays when you use miles and points. I usually pay for my Airbnbs which is always where I stay by the way and if you want $41 off your first Airbnb stay check out the link in the description as well. Um, but yeah like if you stay in Airbnbs 100 plus nights a year like I did during my gap year and you do all this stuff, the costs still rack up quite quickly even if you're not paying rent and stuff at home. So I just wanna give you a realistic picture of what it costs to do what I do, maybe booking some cheap business class fares, things like that as well, um, on an annual basis. And then you know what to strive for, when you can expect kind of the same things as I do and without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so I have everything here on my phone. So basically calculating everything, last year I spent roughly $12,000 on flights and hotels in total. So that's about $1,000 a month, which is what I've been saying this whole time. That's as much as I spend traveling, flying in business class, staying in reasonably nice Airbnbs, hopefully I'll upgrade to even nicer Airbnbs soon, um, and eating nice meals out. So really, this is not a lot. Let's see, what's the smallest amount of money I can think of? A thousand dollars. I know $12,000 sounds like oh, that's a lot to spend on travel, but if you're gonna do it full time, this just shows that it is possible to do what I'm doing for not so much money. So let's just make a list. What are the big costs when you're gonna be traveling throughout the world, presumably outside your country? Well, flights. This one we can basically cut like a quarter by using miles and points from credit cards. And of course in subsequent episodes of this series I will be going way more into that, but basically you can cut that like two thirds in total by using miles and points, so then you save there. Airbnb is my second trick because while I love meeting other people when I travel, I really don't like staying in hostels. I just don't like sharing a room with strangers. I love meeting other people, but it just doesn't always work. So that's why I prefer the privacy that you usually get in an Airbnb. A private room is great, but a private apartment is even nicer because then you get a kitchen, a living room, all this nice stuff and usually a private bathroom. So I almost always travel with Oscar, meaning we split the cost of every Airbnb in the middle. Usually we end up spending about 30 to $40 a night per person on Airbnbs, which as you can figure out, if you spend 100 nights, that's only up to $4,000 per year, which again, really is nothing. And I'm gonna insert some pictures here of at least one of the nice Airbnbs we've stayed in and you can just figure out what type of great value we're getting there. The third big cost is obviously food and a lot of money goes here as well, but it really depends where you're traveling. If I'm traveling to a Western country, I always try to get a place with a kitchen so I can cook at home because it's just so much cheaper. But if I'm going somewhere like Asia or Africa or South America, it's often very cheap to eat in restaurants. Like you might spend four or five dollars for a meal and again, maybe you'll eat breakfast at home, so it's $10 a day for food, which really is not bad. The fourth cost, and now we're getting into slightly smaller things, is for example, like all the utilities, so I'd say transport, phone contracts, things like that. And what I do is I always get a local calling card, if it's possible, most countries have it for quite reasonable prices. Just go into any store once you land, like search in the city, and you'll find a place that offers reasonably priced data. I always get like a tourist plan or 30 days, something like that. Uh, then for transport, 
Uber is obviously great. Lyft in the US, I actually far prefer. Public transport in some cities is amazing, especially in Eastern Asia. Um, and of course, sometimes you want to take taxis. But these costs, I'd say usually a phone contract is around $10 to $20, depending on where you go. And transport, um, that can sometimes be expensive, but usually I like if I'm in Europe, I'll never take a taxi. Always try to save costs with public transport, but maybe around a hundred, two hundred dollars a month. Maybe I'm being like way too generous. There you go. Those are the four big costs. Now, if you're going to a city or nature, most things you can do by yourself. Some places you need to do tours, so then those might co might cost a little bit extra. But overall. These are the essential costs and as you can see I save so 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 much on the flight front I could be spending $12,000 just on flights every year especially given the comfort I usually fly in but considering that I mostly use points it's a lot less and keep in mind that this is while I'm taking all these like crazy unnecessary flights just for reviews like for example economy week I'll pay for that's included in this calculation I did so I do like three airlines, six flights back to back with no real purpose except doing a real comparison between them and that's included in this cost. So obviously you guys won't be doing this kind of stuff. But um, anyway, that's just to give you an idea of how much I spend, how much it takes to do what I do. And really, I just feel so, so blessed that through YouTube and Patreon, you guys are helping me do this because Obviously, I couldn't do it without you. You guys have been supporting and helping me since I was 17 years old, and I am eternally grateful for your being there and for your supporting me. Now, on that note, I wanna give a special shout out. I'm gonna start doing this. I'm just so bad at remembering to do this stuff when I'm editing, but I wanna give a special shout out to a new viewer in the comments every week. So this week's comment shout out is going to Yuri Sharan. Thank you so much for leaving a very nice comment on my latest Lufthansa first class review. If you haven't seen that video, of course, go check that out. But as always, all your guys' support really means a lot to me. And I wanna find a way to get closer with you where those of you who really value time with me and who would really like appreciate getting closer to me in some way, I wanna find a platform or some type of mechanism that we can get time to hang out where I can get to talk to those of you who really are most interested in building as strong a bond as possible. And I just feel like my bond with you guys, my subscribers, is getting stronger and stronger by the day. And any type of platforms where I can talk to you, whether that's live on Instagram or whatever it may be, I'm all for it because we have such a great community going on and there is so much I wanna share with you and I just can't do it because like I don't have enough videos, I don't have enough space to just publish like a Q&A here and there. So YouTube actually recently introduced this thing called channel membership. And I think that's actually a very clever thing they did because that helps me find you guys. I can find all the members of my channel, easily contact you, give you like whatever is on my mind through community messages. There will be also live streams for my members every month. You can easily through a Google form, I made request airlines for me to review. That is also a great place for me to share with you where I will be traveling each month so we can meet up in cities where I'm going uh, so that you know beforehand before you see it on my Instagram story. And I don't really feel like I wanna share that to everyone in my videos just because it's a little scary, like I don't know who is gonna see it, but to my channel members, it's such a logical thing to do. And the last thing which isn't like under my channel membership thing is that soon I'm gonna, like in one or two months, I'm launching something very, very exciting and that I will be able to give you all an exclusive access to if you're a member and I wanna send you a free gift along with that, but you'll have to wait to see what it is until I can reveal it. I'm so, so happy that YouTube introduced an easier way for me to communicate with and find you guys. So check it out, it will be the top link below. And thank you so much for your support as always. I hope you found this video insightful and stay tuned for part two because there we're really gonna delve deep into how to get started with credit cards and maximizing your earnings, getting as many points as possible so that you can travel in comfort in no time. But 
As always, thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up so we can reach 2,000 likes. I would be so, so happy. And until I see you all next time, fly safe.